is Strictly Rangers. I am Jacob Brown, joined here with my dad and special guest George Lake as we talk about the end of the New York Rangers season. Last week, we thought we were doing a season finale preview. We thought we wrapped everything up nice and tidy. Season was over. Things were looking good. Things were optimistic. And then I think 30 minutes after I posted the pod, we got the news of uh, Gordon and uh, J.D., heading out the door, which was completely shocking. Uh, we didn't, I mean, not even a percentage of me uh, anticipated this happening. Uh, and it just happened out of the blue. The, the rumor started, it was, uh, it's because of the statement that they made in, in regards to George Paros essentially calling him out. Then we find out about an hour later, no, 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 that's not it. It's something completely different. It was actually uh, James Dolan and his team that released really statement. had nothing to do with J.D. and Gordon, we actually found out that they didn't even want the statement to be put out. Um, so from what I've heard, at least, it's Dolan went in. He wasn't happy with Gordon. He fired him. And then J.D. said, well, if you're going to fire him, you're firing me, too. And then they both left and they were out the door. So uh, we'll start with you, George. W what was your first reaction when all of this went down? Uh, first reaction was anger. <laughs> yep. Um, I just couldn't believe it. I'm still incensed, you know, a week later. Um, crazy, uh, but not shocking because once Dolan gets involved, it, it's just a, it's just a cluster, yep. you know, and uh, the guy is absolutely insane. Um, you know, there's a reason why the Knicks have sucked for 25 years, you know, because he can't keep his nose out of it. Um, but Listen, now, Gorton, I was on the fence on to begin with, um, but he seemed to be doing okay. So I wouldn't have been that upset if he was the only one gone. But, you know, I guess J.D. stepped in and tried to save him and, you know, said, you know, me and him are going to go if that's the case. And for me, Dolan is just an idiot because – and I, I don't know if I could contribute the whole thing to the statement because everybody's saying it's not. But I think me and your dad touched on this last week, and 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 he was right. I think they might have got pressure from Bettman, um, you know, being totally incensed and might have said that they had to do something. But to me, it was just totally outrageous. Uh, I'm not a big Chris Drury fan to begin with. Uh, I don't know how he's going to handle this. And and plus, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. The fact that Slither and Sather is still in the background. Right. Behind all of yep. this. You know, so that's that's another factor. I mean, listen, you're basically taking uh, JD and saying, okay, well, I gave you your first season was cut off at 65 games. Your second season didn't start till January. No training camp, no nothing. You have uh, half a season at 56 games or whatever, three quarters of a season. And you're going to base a culture on that? Listen, we all knew that, that there's areas that they need to, to upgrade, which obviously is the grit and the toughness. But, I mean, to make a statement like that, like the culture is wrong. What, what what exactly does that mean? You know, these old these yeah. kids are coming along nicely. You know, I mean, just look, Kako from last year to this year was a thousand times better. You know, and the kid's going to be a superstar. Lafreniere came on at the end of the at the end of the season. I mean, just imagine if these kids had a full training camp and we had a full season. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Plus the fact that. He wants to say, oh, you know, well, we got it. We didn't make the playoffs. You didn't make the playoffs. Do you realize that you were aligned in a division with the top four teams in the East? You know, you weren't even in a regular division. Yep. So how can you make an observation like that? It, it, to me, the whole thing was just unbelievable. And yeah, it still has me angry, to be honest with you. No, it, it absolutely should. I mean, what do you think about this, Dad? Yeah, great points. I, and and I, I agree across the board. I think I think it's just uh, Dolan being Dolan. We haven't seen this ugly side of, uh, of him on the Rangers. He's been hands off something. Maybe the only thing that Sather or one of the few things that Sather has done well over the last 20 odd years is 
keep Dolan marginalized. I don't know how he's done that, but <clears throat> clearly uh, Dolan has not been able to insert himself directly into the Rangers world with the level of venom and stupidity that he has on the Knicks side for a quarter of a century. But um, in this particular circumstance, listen, um, I said this to you, Jacob, you're bringing in one guy to do the job of two guys. And both of those guys have, a, uh, and the one guy that you're bringing in has no experience leading an organization in either role. And you've gotten rid of two guys that have experience in, in each role and combined in hockey life. I mean, what are we going to call JD's professional JD's over 40 years in professional hockey, 20 years as an executive, 20 years as the most, or whatever it is, 15 years as an executive, 20 years uh, as the best analyst in, in the sport. Uh, you're throwing that away because of, of, of what? As George pointed out, you didn't make the playoffs in the toughest division to make the playoffs in. You've got a, a, a team that's being built around youth. That was the plan. The only thing missing is the, is the grit and those, those lunch pail guys, but Look who they drafted this year after Lafreniere. We talked about that a million times. They went out and got Brent, uh, Brent, what is it, Brendan Schneider? Schneider? Braden yeah. Schneider, yeah. Braden Schneider. You know, six foot two inch guy, 200 something pounds, hard nosed dude. They got the Cooley guy at number 60 something, uh, 6'3, 218, and he's 18, 19 years old. They're getting mean, ugly guys, and, and you've got more size in the system. And you know what? You go out and get more size to fill in the roles for the, for the Roonies and the Blackwells and so forth. Or you use a Gautier who's 6'4", 230, uh, which you should have been doing all fucking year anyway. Right. So, right? so um, you just fill around the edges. And, and to, to George's point, uh, what you know, Drury made a comment, we need to, everybody who jumps over the board needs to know their role. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. I, does anybody on this team not know their role? Like, does Panarin not know he's supposed to score every shift? Does Zibanejad no not know the same thing? Um, does Kako and Lafreniere not know? I mean, like, it's not like Quinn was. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Quinn's, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But it's not like Quinn said, "Hey, you know, uh, um, unless it was Quinn who was telling these guys to do something that they shouldn't do." Maybe that was a more of a reference to Quinn and his. Because of all that disconnect, right, between the, the star players that we're hearing about and, and right. playing kind of like D Tortorella squared, right? Right. Um, but I, I, listen, that's a coaching decision. You don't get rid of G the GM who has built a good franchise, drafted well this year, uh, made some decent trades, and has this organization poised, I think, for excellence, sustained excellence. Yeah. I mean, you know, bottom line, I mean, you guys dressed up. Uh each side of it, every angle. I mean, this is just, uh, it's, 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 a it's a terrible decision. I mean, this is a, this is an owner that when I read the news, I imagine James Dolan sitting there like, Oh, you know, the Rangers didn't make the playoffs. Got to fire everybody. He doesn't know anything about hockey. He hasn't worked in hockey. He doesn't do anything in hockey. He doesn't influence the team. And quite frankly, I forgot Like you tend to forget as a Ranger fan, you kind of, you know, he's the owner and you know, he could do something, but you don't want to think that he's the owner of the team. This is the first time that I've actually really felt, wow, Dolan really does own the Rangers because the first thing he's done in recent memory, at least for me, because I'm young, obviously, and it's it's a total flunk of a move. And there's no justification for it. The, there's other ramifications that we don't even know about now. Uh, first of all, Artemi Panarin may not have even been a Ranger without John Davidson. So uh, is, is he going to be sitting there now saying – uh, wait a second. I don't know what my leadership's looking like. I don't know who my head coach is. How are you guys going to draft? What are you going to go get more stars? Panera might be sitting there in the dark now. What, what's going on here? I'm here for the next seven years. You don't know. Uh, you know, so the Rangers have a very difficult cap situation. They have a lot of young players that you have to decide which ones do we keep? Which ones do we not? And now Chris jury, who used to be the third guy in line for decision-making is now number one and you lose the top two guys. So now it's up to Chris Drury to decide which of JD and Gorton's players he wants to keep. Cause you're not restarting with this group. It's Drury's picking up the pieces from what these guys have left him. And, and, you know, you mentioned Jeff Gordon. If it was just Gordon, I wouldn't be upset. Uh, I agree with that. He got lucky with the two lottery picks. If he didn't have that, you'd be looking at it like, well, Panarin was JD. That's not really Gordon. Uh, you know, but Gordon drafted Keandre Miller. He got Fox in, 
Uh, he got Lindgren. He got, you know, three, uh, six of the defense that might be here for the better part of the next decade. So you have to give credit to him for that. He made the Zibanejad trade. Uh, he kept Buchnevich along. Which, which by the way, and the Zibanejad trade might have been the biggest fleece in the history of, of, of hockey. Oh, God, right? yeah. I mean, Broussard has basically Str been a – yeah, yeah. Strom for Spooner. I'm not a big Strom fan, but uh, I mean, Ryan Spooner, I think, is working at that fucking Burger King right now. Right. So, he gave away Shea. I mean, you know, that was right. that was the right move at the time. So right. he's and made a lot of good other, moves. There's other, picks, there's other picks in there, too, right? Is anybody upset with the Kravstov pick at number nine, right? They kind of, at the time, I was like, why did they go off the board? But that guy's looking pretty damn good right now, right? Well, yeah, he's going to be excellent. He's going to be excellent. And look at Baron, too. Morgan Barron, look at Hedl, no, right? 6'4", 230, you know? Exactly. You got Hedl as well, right? So Hedl is not, it hasn't had uh, the minutes, really, to, to, you know, that he might have gotten on a, on a different team. Without hey, him. hey, so, you, you, you can't forget about Brett Howden, right? <laughs> oh, Brett Howden. That's <laughs> one right yeah. yeah, I think Brett Howden has kind of run his course, I think. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. He's a great penalty killer, but other than that, I mean, he's just invisible. Yeah, no. So, and think about it. Morgan Morgan Barron was up was uh, was up for about I don't know three three shifts and a half a sandwich and scored a goal, a real goal. Right. And, and Howden is an empty man goal for the entire year. It's like come right. on, guy. Well, right. And as it? much as I love Heedle, he's the most frustrating player. I think I don't think he could hit the net if he was standing in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know what? You know what Heedle means to this organization. Hopefully, see somebody sees the skill and the size and the speed and goes, you know what? I'll I'll take him for what we need in return. I don't know if that's part of the, the Eichel thing, but he's miscast, quite frankly. And I've talked about this a million times. He's a right wing. He's not a he's not a center. He doesn't have center like vision. Um, he, he he shoots first instead of pass. If anything, Lafreniere should be in the middle, but I won't beat that up. The point is we're in like chaos world. They got rid of Rangers royalty in John Davidson. Yeah. And and uh, it's it's just a really a really uh, unsettling time right now. And I don't. And there's nothing to suggest that Chris Drury is the guy uh, to to pick up these pieces. And on top of that, hearing that Gerard Gallant is the is the lead front runner for the fucking coaching position. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Where? Do I... uh, you know what, dude? I I. Wouldn't have a problem with that, to be honest with you. Really? I, I really I would. wouldn't. I really I, wouldn't. I mean, uh, him as opposed to the other six people they're talking about right now, well, I would take him over all six of those. The only guy that I would... You don't want to torch 3.0 because he's going to no. kill the kids like he always does. Right. You know, Babcock's got baggage. Nope. No good. I mean, unless... <laughs> Listen, now, in a perfect world, Bring the most contractors up at the end of the right. season. You go get them. Right. Okay. But how long do you want to wait? They could go to the final four, we know. And then you talk in the middle of July. Right. Right. You know? So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm just saying out of those candidates that they've come out and said, these are the top six guys. I think Gallant's the best of them. Well, my, my take on that is that, that I would go with Julianne before Julianne before I would go with, uh, with Galan, and, and there's one reason why because I, re I read recently that the and it was kind of buried in the article, but it was that Galant is not necessarily known for having uh for being able to um, uh, impose a structured approach on the ice, and that concerns me. That that that, that would you know, if they go back, the one thing that 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 uh, well, well, I forget the assistant was that came on this year, the defensive guy who replaced Ruff. Um, the one thing he was able to do is, is is put a defensive structure in place that worked. I thought. I mean, they were. Yeah, they were, that was Jacques Martin. So. Yeah, yeah, he 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 did, and he, and the penalty killed ma massive improvement. So going back to the time of like Vigneault, when it was, hey, throw the puck on the ice and wherever you fucking skate, uh, good luck. Uh, I don't know if we're ready for that again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and uh, you know the other thing with JD is too, I'm not, you know. This just shows you how dull and insane he is. Is, I mean, just look at his. I mean, who do you think built that cup team in St. Louis? He did, right? Okay, even though he was gone for three years after that, but then he went and built Columbus to a playoff team, right? You know, so 
to me, you get like I said before, you give the guy basically two half a seasons, and then right. you're saying, okay, bye. The culture's not right. Oh, what are you thinking? Yeah, he's, he's, look, let's not um, let's not underestimate the the psychology of this reality, right? Dolan is about five foot four, right? <laughs> is a very small man, right? And so. <laughs> He's looking around and watching Panarin getting ragdolled and the Rangers and, and uh, you know, Truba getting drilled into the wall and Lindgren and thinking, I'm a big man. I need a big man around me. That wouldn't happen without big men. Blah, 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 right. And right. so his ego, his Napoleon, Napoleonic, you know, impulse kicks in and he's like, I want, I want a big man next to me. But I mean, that's how the Rangers drafted. And if you think that JD and Gordon, weren't going to go into this upcoming uh, off season and bring in a bunch of lunch pail meat and potato guys. You're delusional. Cause that's how they drafted after they got the fucking superstar. Exactly. And that's, that's what I was saying in the, uh, from the get go. I mean, you know, it's not like they were going to sit around and do nothing. I mean, wait till the season's over evaluate. Plus the fact they have an expansion draft coming up. Right. So, I don't know if I trust Drury to go through this roster and go, yeah, we're going to unprotect these guys. Right. Yeah. You know, I, right. From what I've heard, it's going to be up to Howden and Gautier uh, is what a lot of people have broken down. Those will be the two available. So that the Rangers might lose Gautier for nothing because I don't see Seattle saying, oh, I'll, I'll take Howden over Gautier. Right. Which is a disappointment because Quinn basically buried Gautier. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. The kid is fast. He makes mistakes, but that's because he doesn't play. I mean, you can't play him one game and then scratch him for 20. No, nah, it's absurd. You know, I mean, he's he's big. He's 6'4", whatever, 225, yeah. 230, and yeah. he can stay. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he was the number one draft pick. So, you know, yeah. let the kid grow into it. He's only 22 years old, too, I think. No, yeah. It was an absurd. I mean, you see that. You, when you saw him on the ice, you noticed him. He had bursts of speed. That were that were game changing that are, you don't see very often. He just moved faster than everybody on that. On top of that, he comes from a. This is not even a joke. He comes from a, a, a long list, a, a long history of bodybuilders in his family. So this guy was working out when he was like nine years old, and that's not an exaggeration. So he's a beast of a man on top of being incredibly fast. And I don't know, get him a pair of boxing gloves and put him in the ring and say, learn how to do that shit, right? And right. Then maybe and think about what a fourth line next year might look like if 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 you just if you don't get any more lunch bell guys and you just go from within and you say Morgan Barron centering Gautier and Cooley, right? The, the, the number 60 overall pick. Right. That would be that would be over 600 pounds worth of fucking guys coming down the ice. Right. Uh, all of them was can skate and two of the three that would punch people in the face. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It just, it's so disheartening. It really is. It just, it, it points to uh, uh, what might be an era of dysfunction. And I don't, and again, you're getting it's, one, you're, you're giving up two with, I don't know, 60 odd years worth of, uh, of, uh, of real experience in the NHL to, to Drury. And I don't, I don't, I don't, find, I don't care if he's a savant. It still doesn't make sense. Right. It's, it's not just to me. It's not an era of dysfunction. I mean, sadly, I mean, I know we're on a Ranger podcast right now. The Rangers have won cup since 1940. It, you get, you're an original six team with one cup since 1940. That's not good at all. And there, that tells you there's something wrong there. And whether it's Dolan the whole time, who knows? But there's something not going right, and now you're seeing at least now, you had the direction trending upwards with the with the front office head coach could have went, you know, they would have fired Quinn either way, I think. But yeah. front office was going the right way, and now it's not. And so, listen, Jury could be great, but when I hear James Dolan say, "Oh, well, I really like Chris Jury because he reminds me of Brian Cashman," that that worries me because Brian Cashman, a never built a team on his own. He's won one World Series uh, since 2000, uh, and he uh, he bought the 2009 team, and he inherited the 2001. So he didn't create the 90s teams or anything like that. He pays for all his teams. So if that's what Drury's going to be, and he's going to be like, oh, well, let's go trade for Eichel for $11 million. He's our big guy. That's very Brian Cashman-like. Does that result in wins? We'll see. 
Yeah, no, you know what? To me, I would stay far away from Eichel. That's just my opinion. Wow. I think he's, I think he's damaged goods. I think to get him, you're going to have to get up a boatload, and I just don't think he's worth it. The, I, listen, I know he's been playing on a shitty team in Buffalo for the last five years, but the games I've seen him play, because, you know, I have center ice. I watch all the games. You know, he just yep. doesn't impress me. You know, like they were talking when he was, you know, when he was drafted coming out. He, to me, he just hasn't reached that level yet. You know, I, I would disagree to a certain point. I think he is a victim of his of his surroundings. I think he's got a little bit of a hard edge to him. To me, it all comes down to the deal. What are you, what are you giving up, right? So, um, I don't think bringing him on board would be a detriment to this team. It's just a question of. What do they give back in that package? Are you giving up, uh, you know, young, uh, controllable, big defensemen like you know whether it be Robertson and, and Schneider? You got to give both of them. Candidly, if you give up Lundqvist, the you know the the the, the magic fairy uh, guy over in Sweden who I couldn't give half a shit about, you know, you know, go have fun. We already got one. we got at least two of him in the in the uh, in the in the system right now with Zach Jones and Adam Fox. All right. So you don't need another one. So give him that guy, Strom, Buchnevich, I, I don't know, maybe a couple of draft picks. I don't know, get rid of some salary. But uh, uh, but it all comes down to what that deal looks like because I think you slot him in on, in the second line and or, for, you know, the 1A line, whatever. And I think you're stable there for a number of years. If you don't do that, then move Lafreniere to the middle and 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 find a way to get rid of Strom, Buchnevich for some value because – too much money going out and not enough coming back. But the only one I'm, I'm on the fence about is Buchnevich a little bit. But again, I don't know. You get him in a, you get him in a, in a seven game series. The thing, I think the, thing, the thing to me with Buchnevich is what's the alternative on the roster right now? Uh, you no. know, his contract. Yeah, no, there is none. Like you take him off the, the, out of the top six, you don't have a guy that you can rely on to score goals. So am I willing to trade Buchnevich for something? Sure. But right now, there's nothing to replace him. That's why I'd be much more willing to say, hey, Buffalo, take Strom, Robertson, Lundqvist, and Heedle or something like that, or a draft pick or whatever, or Georgiev, right? They need a goaltender. Uh, looks like Olmark doesn't want to stay there, so you throw in a goalie too. Um, Strom, well, I wanted to ask you, Joy, what's your opinion on Strom and Buchnevich? Uh, my dad's been for months, uh, get, get Strom out of here. He's not big enough. Uh, but I'm saying, you know, his scoring, he was top 25 in scoring, um, but I, I would give him up in the right deal. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be the right deal, I think, at this point. Uh, and listen, you only signed him for two years. Um, so I, I would stick with him. Busnevich actually impressed me this season by breaking yeah. out the way he did, yeah. playing both ends of the ice and penalty killing. So – like I said, it would have to be the right deal if you want to include him. But I know for a fact, Buffalo's going to ask for somebody like Kratzoff. They're going to ask for Schneider. They're going to ask for, you know, they might go out on a limb go, yeah, give us Kako too. You know, yep. they're going to ask for a boatload of shit. And what's Drury going to do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, here you go. Because we, we need a number one center. You know, there's a lot of other centers on the market this offseason. You know, and the one I would like to target is playing in Florida right now, and that's Barkov. Oh, is, he available? is he available? No, I mean, he's he's the captain down there, so I don't see them moving him. It would have to be a hell of a haul because he's like – because I, I know Florida Panthers fan. He's one of my friends. He's like, this guy's in Florida for the rest of his career type thing. Yeah, but listen, you got to know, I think either – I'm not sure if he's either a, an RFA this year or a UFA because – you know, if they can't pay him the money, he's going to walk. No, yeah. I mean, if they can't pay him, he's gone. I mean, he would be – I mean, he's probably better than Eichel. I mean, I, I think he he is. I mean, he's bigger than Eichel, stronger than Eichel. Uh, he might – he probably is – well, skill-wise, I don't know, but Markov has been tops in the league in scoring and goes so underrated because he's in Florida, and now all of a sudden that they're in the playoffs, everyone knows who he is. But – uh, you know, hey, if they could get him on an RFA offer sheet, that would be a hell of a uh, of a grab. I mean, Dad, are you looking that up right now? Yeah, um, 
I, I think I think we can probably scrap the idea that there's going to be an R, uh, you know, a, a uh, miraculous RFA uh, uh, offer sheet. The, 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 these these GMs are the, it's the good old boy world. And the RFA thing doesn't happen. Uh, I don't understand why not. I don't know if they're just too gentlemanly about it, but like every other sport is cutthroat. Somebody's available and they throw the fucking money at it. Right. Um, but but uh, not in the NHL. I don't and I don't understand it. I, I I'll never get my head around it. I mean, the last time the Rangers went after anybody meaningful that I can remember with an RFA thing was the Sackick thing, twenty odd years ago. And, right. Uh, and Colorado, you know, bitch slapped them and paid them off. So um, yeah, I don't I don't see that. That was right after the mess took the money and ran to Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, he took the money and ran because the Rangers didn't want to pay him, which right. would have been, you know, which was fucking retarded. Right. Um, at, at that point. So, um, I mean, yeah, let me see. Uh, let me see. Where so, find. would you guys take uh, Nugent Hopkins? He's a UFA. Fuck no. Fuck no. Dude, I don't know. You know what? Because uh, to me, he's like, he's like Jekyll and Hyde. Yep. You know, he's either he's, great. He's, he's a lefty he's version of Strong. Yeah, I listen. I watch a lot of Edmonton games, and he's either on his mark or he's invisible man. You know what I'm yeah, and he's got Mister Two Points per Game McDavid to help him out too. What happens when he's not there? Yeah, exactly. Now, Jacob, let me ask you this question, and, and Joe, what? Um, how would you feel about Mess getting involved here somehow? I would love it. I mean, from what he said in that New York Post article, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, he said yeah, basically, yeah, like in nice way, he said, uh, I wouldn't have built the team like that. They needed more muscle. He says, I'm like, you need to beat someone in the alley and on the ice, some version of that quote. But yeah, no, get Messi in here. He's exactly what the Rangers need. He was he perfected the art of grit and 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 putting fear into the other team. If you want a guy to help out with that, he might be the guy. But what worries me is Brian Leach just left the organization today. So right. what the hell is that? I mean, talk about culture. Fucking Brian Leach leaves. Right. So right. I don't know. Let me ask you, was Messi asked before JD and Gordon were fired? He was, yeah, he was asked after they were fired, but before Quinn was. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then, so then I don't think Messi gives a shit about culture. Uh, and what is in, I, I, and what I mean by that is I, if Brian Leach left because of the JD thing and was offended by it, clearly Messi is not because he was campaigning for Quinn's job before he even fucking lost it. So, um, so I would, but, I, but I, you know, I, I would look at that. I, I thought Messi should have been brought in when, before Vigneault was brought in, quite frankly. Um, I, I thought he was the, be the better, and he didn't really get it. Well, look well let me ask you this. Do you, do you bring him in as coach or a GM? Well, he he's not going to be the GM. We know that. Drury, Drury apparently can run. Drury's going to be running the Knicks and the Yankees pretty soon. <laughs> if Dolan has his fucking wife. I mean, uh, you know, it's it, uh, again. I, I don't understand. It. I don't. I mean, you had a rock. So, and again, to your point earlier, you know, Gordon Lee. You got to respect what the guy was able to accomplish. Yes, he got lucky, but he also built some other pieces, and you know the direction he was headed in. And JD was driving that. So. You you gave up both of those guys with a boatload of experience, with with a, with a certain cachet around the league, right? Because clearly they've been there and done that in multiple roles. I mean, Gordon right. has a track record and a pedigree that dates back to Boston. He built, right. he had a big big hand in building that franchise, which oh by the way is not so fucking bad for the past fifteen years. Right. So so you you gave up two bona fide front office you know gurus. For a guy who's who's basically run Team USA and the Hartford Wolfpack, Wolfpack, sorry, it just doesn't jive. It doesn't add up. So if I'm anything, I bring Messi in. If anything, to just be a, a buffer from Drury fucking this whole thing up. Quite frankly, I'd put him behind the bench, and that that'll be like a Keenan Mike Smith type of thing. Uh, you know, I mean Neil Smith thing. Right. You know, we're basically Keenan told me you know, what the fuck to do. Right. I mean, I, I don't think Drury would be that much of a, a, a pushover, but Messier's voice in that room would hold a lot of weight and give a little bit more, you know, ambient, uh, I say gravitas back to the organization, which they lost in massive amounts with JD walking out the door. 
Right. And I even said that the other day. I said, listen, just bring Keenum back and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, because, he, you know, he, he's why they won the Cup that year. So him and Messier, obviously, they had great performances, but they don't make those trades to get those grit guys down the, down the stretch. Right. That's the mo- that's been the model in the NHL forever. You need those lunch pail guys. And, and you know, the Rangers were going to go out and get them somehow, some way. And and P- and Larry Brooks said it a million times. They were going to lose somebody in that top six, top nine equation. That was an inevitability. There's not enough room for all those kind of dipsy doodle skill guys, even though they're bigger than the old Rangers Smurf teams. Uh, they were not. They didn't have that kind of in your face uh, physicality. But some of those guys would have went away, and we would have had their replacements that would have been big, strong, mobile, offensive guys. Right. So are we uh, are we over the Blackwell show, everyone? I mean, he's been pretty highly praised, uh, but with the way that the direction of the team's going, and you need grit and muscle. Uh, listen, I, I don't think Blackwell fits those categories. No, I think he's a good little player, but he's not that. He's not that guy. No, you know, I oh. think he, you know he showed he showed a lot this year as far as being uh, tenacious. But um, he, he he's not that guy. And, you know, everybody can say what they want, that, uh, you know, the, the team lost a lot when they traded Lemieux. But to me, Lemieux wasn't yeah. that guy either. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I've been I'm telling like, that to people. Like, this guy, no one's scared of Lemieux. Yeah, he wasn't – he wasn't uh, – he's not uh, – he's not a fraction of what his father was. No. Okay. So it's not just because he drops the gloves, yeah, but he gets his ass kicked every time. Right, right. Yeah. You know, he, he, he was not, he, I mean, you can't have a six foot, 195 or 200 pound enforcer in, in, a, in a league where, you know, you got Tom Wilson's roaming around and Matt Martin's and, and you know, that will literally, uh, you know, bitch slap you, uh, you know, back to back to kingdom come. Right. No, he wasn't that guy. And, and, and by the way, you know, it just, what this points to the Blackwell thing, and this was why it was such an awkward year. They were in this nether region between we got it, we want to make you know let's make the playoffs if we can, and but let's see the, the kids develop. And who was the casualty of that? We keep going back to this well, but one of the casualties was Gautier for the Roonies and the Blackwells of the world. And like at some point, they should have just said, get in a room and say, listen, it'd be great if we make the playoffs, but we'll never need fucking Colin Block Blackwell ever. So let's put somebody in the lineup that we will fucking need and figure out if he's any good. All right. <laughs> no, totally true. It's totally true. So there's actually a report about the Rangers uh, coaching search that just came out. Pierre Lebrun, uh, he is, yeah, so he's the TSN guy, major uh, NHL insider. So he said, hearing that Gerard Gallant's interview went well with the New York Rangers, Gallant squeezed it in before flying this weekend to the men's worlds where he is coaching team Canada. So, Hey, he got it in. They've interviewed him. And I mean, I don't know if that means within a week we'll hear uh, two days from now, a month from now, who knows, but they got the interview in. So it, they've started the process with him first. Yeah. 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 I, so. I, I don't know. I, I say this. I mean, I think looking back on it in retrospect, Quinn did a lot more things wrong than he did right. Uh, in terms of lineup management, in terms of, and we talked about this earlier, Jacob, about how he would come out after games and say, I don't know why I didn't play the third line more than I should have, you know, that more than eight minutes. Or, I don't like, know you why, don't do uh, that in New York. <laughs> you don't fucking do that. I, I don't know why Lafreniere played four minutes from uh, in the last three games. Like, yeah, and he's, and I put him on the fourth line and he played, yeah. you know, four minutes. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know why he did that. Yeah. Maybe because yeah. you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I have a I have a theory. I have a theory. You're, you're a fucking moron. That's why. Right. I have a theory, <laughs> Quinn. You're fucking clueless. And like and we talked about it all goddamn year. Like Brett Howden, Mr. Invisible, Gautier gets 30 seconds every two weeks and makes something of it. Right. And and you know, and you got now for that matter, you got Morgan Barron in the minor leagues. Like, figure that out. You know, pairing right. it up too. I mean, Morgan Barron scored nine, ten goals in a short period of time down in the HL. So it's not like he was down there doing what Howden was doing. He was scoring goals. That's another thing with Howden. He had only scored in the WHL before he got to the NHL. Scored fifty something goals in the WHL. 
which just because of Howden now, I don't trust anything that comes out of the WHL. Uh, <laughs> everyone scores over there. So Howden didn't have an AHL. At least Barron, you say, okay, college, captain to Cornell. He's a leader. He scored there two points a game, whatever. Goes to Hartford. He's scoring there. Why they wait till game uh, 54 to call the guy up? I don't get it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, 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 you know, so you look at who, who was playing instead of those two guys. Colin Blockwell, Ke- Kevin Rooney, D. Giuseppe, and fucking Howden. I mean. Yeah. Well, well know, what's our, what's our uh, analysis on Zach Jones? Because, uh, like you said, Dad, how many Adam Foxes are you going to have that are under six foot and finesse guys that can't hold their own? Exact point. Exact point. You don't need him. You don't fucking need Zach Jones at six foot, you know, eighty eight pounds. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't compute. It doesn't. And he, I don't think he's even six foot. He's like five ten, five eleven at best. And you yeah. know when somebody's listed at five ten, it means fucking five nine, five eight. So <laughs> you know, it's he's like five ten, 10 on skates. If I ten on skates, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So you know, again, you need. You, we we're beating a dead horse here, but who's on your left side right now? Andre Miller, six five, two something. Lindgren, gritty but kind of small. That third guy on the left side's got to be a beast. It's got to be a guy who just you don't need any more offensive shit out of you. Andre Miller can be that number two offensive uh, presence on the back on the back side. He'll develop into that. You yeah. don't need another smallish guy back there. Yeah, and yeah, you can. Could- yeah, you could see kind of uh, towards the end how Miller was running out of gas. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think you know he's not used to playing that many games in a season. Um, but you could definitely tell he was he was losing his punch a little bit. He was, yeah. he was, he was, but he's got so much promise. And you know, oh, that yeah, third no pair doubt. for me, I mean, you know, Robertson Schneider all day, six four, six two. They both hold their own. Yeah, it be, might, might be a little bit scary with the youth and maybe some of the mistakes that they'd make, but you got Truba for that. You've got Lindgren, who's defensively responsible. Uh, Adam Fox was, I mean, blew away everyone. Nobody thought he would do this. Um, so, you know, it's bright. It's bright. So I did the math. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a math guy, but uh, it looks like there looks like there's a 15 million in cap space for the Rangers this offseason. If they were to get Eichel, that would be 11 of the 15. So that takes up a lot of it, or they could decide, hey, let's sign three guys for five mil, you know, or do something else and, and give us some room. So do you guys think they use this room up or are they going to use Eichel for almost all of it? I'm just going to go back to what I said before. I'm not a big Eichel fan. So <laughs> to me, I would, you know, you got to go out and you, you need a George Reeves type. That's what you need. You need somebody yeah. like that. Maybe you can yeah. steal him from Vegas. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah, he neutralizes Matt Martin. He neutralizes uh, uh, Tom Wilson. Um, that guy is literally unbalanced. So that's who you want in your lineup and put him on the fourth line. And it doesn't matter who else is out there uh, on the fourth right. line at that point. Yep, exactly. So, all right, guys. Well, we talked a lot about the look of the Rangers going in. We're very disappointed, not happy. We thought we would be. Everything was going good. And Man, we can't wrap this up. We're just getting started. Let's just start another thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we'll uh, we'll come back next week. We, we I'm sure we'll have some Ranger news for head coaching and everything like that. So hopefully we will. Uh, all these podcasts are on YouTube. Look up Strictly Sports Productions. Find all the podcasts organized in the playlist iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify as well. Follow us on Twitter at Strictly Sports P on Facebook and Instagram at Strictly Sports Productions. For George Lake and my dad, I'm Jacob Brown, and we'll see you next time.